does everything need to be visual for vlogging? I would say podcasting is also an interesting route because you have a lot of people who use my recordings in the car and things like that. They're using them while they're driving around. They're not actually watching me face to face. So podcasting can work. It also expands your audience out because if you do some podcasts that get into iTunes and other things, um, they can actually draw another set of subscribers into your videos um, that many other people may not even be approaching. What I do is I use a piece of software. I'm just charging my phone here on my mobile phone, which the quality is pretty good. It's a, call, uh, it's a piece of software called Spreaker, as you can see here. Very simple, well, very simple piece of software. All you do, let me go back to the main window, and come on. Just click the record button. Sorry, the camera's in the wrong place from here. Uh, just click the record button. And it's recording the audio. So if you turn around and put a good microphone on this, I mean, the phone one's not too bad. If you go to my uh, podcast, you'll actually hear the quality off this phone, which is a Samsung Note. But it's recording away at the moment. And when you finish, you just press stop. Well, it's paused it, then press stop. And it puts it in your draft, like here. It's really hard to, for you guys to see this. Um, but then you can edit it by clicking the share button on the right hand side and you'll see there's a list of things there and you can put your title, you can put your tags and then you can actually upload it automatically into YouTube. Very quick and easy to use. And there's some, if you've seen some of the podcasts I've done recently, they're not really visual. They're, they're stuff that you may listen to, but there's nothing visually to discuss. It's more about my thoughts, my opinions, that sort of thing. Because I thought, you know what, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'll throw some out there, see if anybody's actually interested in them or not. And also, if they're interested in listening more than watching things. Um, and the response has been okay so far, so I'll probably do some more podcasts. But the big advantage with that is, with a phone, uploading only takes probably about a minute to two minutes because there's no visual. But I wouldn't say do this with things like the market, or <laughs> listen to the sounds of the market, or, well, depends what you're into. I mean, if you're train spotting, you may be interested in different sounds of the train. But generally, it's for stuff that you want to say to people or discuss or um, you can broadcast with a live conversation, for example, where you can actually get people communicating, which if you reduce the video bandwidth, you have more scope to get better sound quality, better um, communication, because I can't manage the Google Hangouts, for example, on my internet connection. It just dies. So this is quite a useful tool for that sort of thing. Um, but also, you can actually download the list of my videos, or, well, ideally don't download my videos, <laughs> unless you're actually going to um, contribute in some way. Um, what I mean, it doesn't always have to be financial, but I, I do not make money on podcasts. They're purely me sharing my thoughts and opinions and stuff. Um, they're not monetized. There are, I think with you, iTunes and stuff, because of the way it's set up, they want you to pay um, for subscriptions and whatever. I'm not really into that. I'd much rather if you, if you enjoy it and think it's worth something, just send me 50, 50 centavos or something. I'm not really fast. Um, but the money that I get from all the video stuff ends up going back into video somewhere um, or audio. You know, for example... I don't know. I've got most of my equipment now. I can't really say I'll, I'll more equipment because I think we've pretty much got everything we need. Um, probably <coughs> more going out uh, recently. It's probably making us more proactive in traveling around. But yeah, the, they're a pretty useful way of um, getting some more subscribers in from a 
group that you may not be communicating with at the moment. They may be unaware of you. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't hunt people's websites down. They go, oh, I'll have a look at their YouTube channel. In the same way, I don't hunt people's um, podcasts down unless they're actually interesting, which is normally when I'm looking for a specific subject and somebody catches me and I'll go, oh, that's worth listening to. So when you do do them on the phone, I would recommend not instantly upload but get yourself a little jingle that says, please subscribe, please go to my YouTube channel, something like that, so that you actually encourage them to come back in to your video stuff as well. All right, thanks for watching. So here you see my Spreaker channel. Um, as you can see, you can listen to the videos, uh, audios I've made so far, the podcasts, but also what you can do is if you use this you can subscribe it into an RSS feed and you can, it's iTunes compatible so there's a fair bit of flexibility in here on how you want to listen to the podcast um, but like I said I don't actually make any revenue off this site whatsoever uh, which is why I generally feed them into YouTube and at least with YouTube I get something out of the recordings because any advertisement on YouTube has something going through it. These don't have any adverts whatsoever, but I know some people have requested, can I do some uh, broadcast that they can get onto their phone, share with other people, etc. This is where you'll grab them. This is um, speaker.com stroke show stroke Wilkie minus sign mats stroke tracks, and you'll actually get all my audio.